Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to introduce my latest cameo, Pont Dulas. But rather than the sort of layout overviews I typically give here on the uh, on the channel, where there's quite a lot of emphasis on on the craft, on the techniques involved. Today I'm going to wind it back, um, and I'm going to try and express to you where this layout came from, why it matters and what it's brought to me, how I feel about it. Um, I might touch on some of the craft because I'm sure you, uh, those of you out there who, who love that sort of stuff would be really interested. If I don't cover anything in the video that you see in here that you'd like to know more about, just leave me a comment on the video and I will we'll get back to you. So to the beginning, eh? Let's, let's see where we start. And it's the chance upon a booklet um, quiet between trains. It's a collection of photographs by uh, Vernon Parry and it's been edited by David Gowan. I got it from a shop in Aberystwyth. Um, I can't even remember where I first saw the book. I think I may have seen it advertised somewhere. But you know, if I'm honest, it was the title which drew me in before I really knew anything about what it was going to be in it. But the title itself was just like so evocative. It's called Quiet Between Trains. Quiet Between Trains. And if that doesn't evoke a sort of melancholic nostalgia um, about our great British branch lines, then I'm not sure what will. And anyway, the subject is uh, the uh, I think it's probably late 50s, and it is the lines north of um, Carmarthen, uh, the the former line to Aberystwyth, which I think by the time of the photos in this book had been severed, um, north of Ponkhanio, and the Aberaeron branch. And it's a focus really on, I suppose, it, or it shows a lot of the freight traffic and milk traffic. But, you know, it's not really the subject as such, although this is part of Wales that I really, really love. I drive through it regularly when I go and see my mum. And I just, there's something about, it's very quintessentially Welsh without being coastal. It's not big mountains of Snowdonia, it's rolling hills. It's lush greenery. Um, and there's a lot of beauty there. And so the photos in this book, although in black and white, I can paint in the colours. You know, I've travelled through that landscape in all weathers, in all seasons. You know, I feel like I've been there. I've even seen some of the remnants of the railways described in here. So, I can, you know, I've seen bridge abutments, I've seen embankments. I've, I feel like these photos show me what was. But I've seen what is. So... I don't know about you, but I love a book on a Sunday morning, uh, sat uh, on the sofa, looking out the window, flicking through, you know, the difference between researching photographs on the internet and researching photographs on, in a book is, is just, it's so different. You know, the internet's, it's there, it's quick, it's accessible, it's bang, bang, bang. And for someone like me, um, that can be a real rabbit hole. You know, I can get drawn totally down that that line and, and um, find it hard to switch off. Whereas the pace of a book, it's more focused. You know, I've made a decision, a conscious decision to buy it or borrow it. Um, it's more focused, it's choreographed. It's a collection of what the author considers the best on that subject. And the feeling sitting, enjoying that, usually with the dog snoring beside me on the sofa, uh, it's a great way to spend some time. And that's how it started this time with this, this book. But it was flicking through and getting to photos like um, like on this spread here um, of trains in the valley, of trains with the rolling hills, of trains with trees. Um, it felt like it felt like something I really, really wanted to try and capture in miniature in some way. I felt a connection to it. I felt like I wanted to express that. And I could excuse that with some craft excuses around. I wanted to try some scenic work in Engage a bit bigger than I've done before. I wanted to put a railway on an embankment in Engage, something I hadn't done before. So I could come up with all the craft excuses, but this project wasn't driven by craft. It was driven by the heart. And it probably would have just stayed as some sketches on in my sketch pad if it wasn't for Graham Farish. Um, 
If you read my blog, you'll know that pannier tanks do hold a special place in my heart. My first uh, proper electric model railway train, steam train, was the Hornby Double Hornby, Hornby Double Pannier, the old Triangle one, uh, the 8750, I think. Um, green GWR on the tanks, obviously. Not a bad runner, all things considered. Not very well detailed, obviously, but at the time it didn't matter. And I didn't know what it was, obviously, at the time either. It was just a steam engine. But that first steam engine was a pannier tank. And then that kind of feels like it's a ribbon through time, doesn't it? That all steam engines are pannier tanks, aren't they? You know, um, all isn't the best steam engine a pannier tank. And I think it goes back to that first model. So, you know, some of us are connected through a love of trains. I feel like I'm... A love of model railways and through that love of model railways I discovered the real thing um, and the two things are symbiotic but but it, for me it was first the model railway first the pannier I've always had pannier tanks in my collection um, sometimes more than one but I've not had anything in N and it's something I'd probably resisted steam engines in N for me are always a bit of a compromise especially with the valve gear you know in with the in over time the diesels these days they're absolutely superb and the tooling on some of the steam engines is very nice, but handrails, you know, a knob, handrail knobs, they could be a bit clunky. Um, and valve gear can let them down. But the Graham Farish 64XX was probably an exception, but was like hen's teeth. And then they released the Western Rambler train set. And we should say probably the rest is history. And the result is Pont Dulas. Um, the locomotive you can see here and you see in the rest of this video um, is is the train from the train set. I've modified it to be a 74XX by modifying the cab outline and removing the auto equipment, which was no mean feat in N-Gage. Um, I painted it black, weathered it a little bit. The two open wagons are the Great Western Opens. Um, I've modelled those as Midland pattern um, in BR grey, and then the, the DWR towed brake van, I've done it brown. So that's the train set plus a van and a milk tanker, which were taken from the photos in the book. So if the train set was the catalyst that made it happen, the inspiration was the book, the result is the layout. And now it's complete and finished. I feel, I feel really pleased with the way it's turned out. You know, some of the elements in this scene and this composition were planned, quite well planned, but others have just sort of naturally evolved. And I think that's from, you know, a very strong familiarity with the area. Um, and with the geography of the uh, of the land in the area and you know if you look at this end of the layout you look through the um, you know the road under bridge and you can see the farmhouse beyond you know if you've been to this part of Wales you'll know you feel like you've been there you feel like I've been around that corner I've seen that house right up against the road there you know and then perhaps looking more this way whereas this is perhaps looking inside of me this way is looking into photos and research because that building I've never seen the crossing keepers cottage but I've seen photos of it um, I think it's pen clip pen clipping halt or pen clipping crossing um, and I thought oh that's full of character I'm gonna have to try and recreate that um, so this end is inspired more by the photographs and the that I found on the internet and in this book and so together you know they uh, the, the the ribbons of the rail kind of stitch these two things together don't they you know, we've gone from sort of personal, heartfelt experience through sort of secondhand research and into the sort of scenes and things that I love looking at anyway. You know, and they're connected by the track. And I really, 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 really love the trees. You know, I, I don't know if it's just me, but in winter when I walk around, I'm always looking at the form of trees, at the shape of trees, and my all-time fa all favourites are oaks. You know, the way that they grow in different places, changing the shape of them. You know, down by the river, as I walk down to the station in the village, the ones along there are quite gnarly and twisty, and I guess, you know, that the, the hanging onto the cliff there, the soil must be quite thin, whereas just across the road and, uh, and round the corner slightly, there's a massive tall old oak that's very straight. Um, but I love the way the branches divide and twist and gnarl. And, you know, recreating those in miniature is, is, I don't know, very mindful. Just letting my fingers trace the, the copper filament and bend it where it feels natural. 
and I've been able to capture not just one but three of those in this model. Um, and something I'd always struggled with was the, the lightness of touch in the foliage, especially with N, and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do that, but you know, I'm not going to go into the craft in this video of how it was done, but the results I'm really, really pleased with. They were experiments and they were a success. And I think they add a lot to the character. And whilst the photos in the book show winter, you know, my lived experience of the area is often, you know, spring and summer. Um, and so hopefully the weaving of those two sort of situations uh, comes through in, in, in the overall composition result. Anyway, I probably waffled on far too much already. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. A little bit different to normal. Um, I've enjoyed talking about it like this. And perhaps this is something I, I could do again. Um, I've got a few more sort of more personal projects in the works at the minute. Um, and I think this approach lends lends itself to those rather than commission builds. You know, when I'm working on a project with you or with a customer, you know, that's a, a relationship where um, I'm drawing on others' experiences and weaving that through craft. And so it, it feels like the craft is the subject really there. Um, and I know they're, they're well enjoyed and they're well watched on here, which I am grateful for. Um, but these personal reflections, you know, I've spoken about Paxton Road previously, I've spoken about Beaverbrook, and these are very personal layouts, as is this, and uh, if you can call it a layout. Um, they do tend to lend themselves to this approach. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up, otherwise I'll keep waffling on for ages. Um, as I say, if you've got any questions about how this was done, or you'd like to learn more, then do get in touch, uh, leave me a comment, um, and I will let you know if I can answer it, or I'll point you in the direction of the blog if there's a write-up there. And uh, until next time, I'll see you all again soon.